Hello everyone, Hyper here, and welcome to the Havoc Demon Hunter class preview for the Shadowlands beta. Please keep in mind that anything I say in this video is subject to change, and also this video mostly reflects my opinion of the class, as in is it fun to play, because what I find fun, other people might not. I will be covering everything that they changed moving from BFA into Shadowlands, as well as some of the more powerful legendaries, conduits, soulbind traits, um, as well as all the Covenant abilities. I won't go over every single one of the Covenant um, conduits or the legendaries because a lot of them are not going to see play, so instead I'm just going to focus on the ones that I find to be good or the ones that synergize well with the spec. But without further ado, let's get started. Demon Hunter was probably one of my favorite classes to play as an alt in BFA. Uh, mostly because it's very easy to pick up, however it has a pretty high ceiling as far as mastering the class, which is always a very good combination. Um, and I was really looking forward to the Shadowlands changes, however it does seem that Blizzard deemed the spec a little bit uh, overpowered. So most of the changes that they ended up making are nerfs um, or in some way inhibit or kit rather than add to it. There haven't been any new abilities added, um, as most of the new abilities that other classes got were typically ones that have been removed from the game previously, and with Demon Hunter that's not the case. So to our baseline kit there's been a few changes. One of the first big changes was to Blade Dance. On BFA, whenever you Blade Dance, while you're in the animation of actually Blade Dancing, your dodge chance is increased by 100%. This effect has been removed, which has pretty significant implications at the high end. First of all, in arenas, Blade Dance was used as a way to dodge uh, some crowd control abilities. You could Blade Dance Kidney Shot, uh, for example. And also, Blade Dance just provided some damage mitigation against other melee DPS classes. In Mythic Plus, as well, Blade Dance was used to cheese, um, mostly to dodge some very important mechanics, and it could also be used to help your party out. Mechanics that were frontal ability and could be intercepted by the first target hit were often blade danceable and that took a lot of the strain off of your healers um, in high keys. And that will no longer be usable since you're no longer um, at 100% dodge chance while you blade dance, in fact you get no dodge chance. Next, we have Metamorphosis. This was one of the few additions to the kit. So Chaotic Transformation, the Azerite trait from BFA, has been added to Metamorphosis as a passive ability. And that just means that whenever you meta, your I-Beam and your Blade Dance cooldowns will be reset. Um, so that just ensures that our opener remains mostly unchanged from BFA. Next, we have Emulation Aura. So Immora has been made baseline, however by default it does not generate any fury. In fact, the talent that used to be Immolation Aura is now replaced with a new one called Burning Hatred, which will do the same thing, it will cause your Immora to generate some fury. Then we saw a pretty significant nerfs to our defensives. Blur has been nerfed from a 35% damage reduction down to a 20% damage reduction, which is pretty significant. Blur was one of the craziest defensive cooldowns in the game because it had a short cooldown at being one minute and it had a high defensive um, value at 35% on top of the 50% dodge that you get. So with this, Blur will be a 20% DR for 10 seconds. Um, I think that nerf is a little bit harsh. Maybe if they only toned it down to about 25%, it would have made a little more sense. But it seems that generally they targeted uh, Havoc Demon Hunter's defensive utilities quite a bit. Alright, let's move on to talents because there's been quite a few things changed. In the first tier from Demonic Appetite, the part that gave you CDR on your I-Beam has been removed and moved over to Cycle of Hatred. Which also means the Cycle of Hatred is now changed, it no longer gives you CDR on Metamorphosis, rather you will get CDR on your I-Beam which is kind of a shame because it's competing with one of the best talents in the history of Demon Hunter, which is First Blood. In Tier 2, Insatiable Hunger has been buffed slightly, uh, so we, if we see any Insatiable Hunger builds, um, it's just going to benefit from that. 
But currently, I'm not aware of any builds that utilize Insatiable Hunger. Um, but we'll see how things turn out in Shadowlands. Like I said, Immolation Aura was replaced by Burning Hatred and it just causes your Aura to generate 60 Fury over 12 seconds. Then in the next tier, we had Fell Mastery removed and replaced by Unbound Chaos. Uh, if I remember correctly, this was an Azerite trait in early BFA. And it reads, activating Immolation Aura will cause your inner demon to slam into nearby enemies at the end of your next Fell Rush, dealing 2423 Chaos damage. So after you activate Immolation Aura, you gain a buff that's called Inner Demon, which then you can utilize whenever you Fell Rush. So Fell Rush, and then the demon follows you. And that is the exact same animation as one of our new legendaries that I will show you guys a little bit later. In the next row, this is the defensive row, every single talent has been nerfed. Soul Rending's Leech has been reduced down to 5% when you're outside of meta, um, but it has been increased when you're inside of meta. So arguably this is either buff uh, inside of meta, nerf outside of meta, however you want to look at it. Desperate Instincts has been nerfed, so whenever DI proc your blur would actually be more effective. And they nerfed that slightly. I believe it went from 15% down to 10%. Um, this was already a super niche talent. I'm not sure what they, why they nerfed it. The Netherwalk, which was probably the primary defensive talent for um, raids, probably even arenas and mythic plus, has been nerfed from a 2-minute cooldown to a 3-minute cooldown, which is pretty significant because Netherwalk was a great defensive to have to supplement Blur. Uh, some situations blur is just not enough. Um, luckily, typically you don't need to nether walk every two minutes on cooldown. However, this will make it so in PvP, demon hunters are a little more vulnerable. Next year, like I mentioned before, Cycle of Hatred has been changed. And then Dark Slash has been replaced by Essence Break. So Essence Break is a 20 second cooldown, instant cast. Slash all enemies in front of you for Chaos Damage and increase the damage your Chaos Strike and Blade Dance deals to them by 40% for 8 seconds. So it's essentially just a better Dark Slash because Dark Slash was very limited in its use since it was pure single target. Um, only way this will see play is if First Blood ends up being nerfed. Um, I don't think I've ever talented out of First Blood since like Legion. So unless they balance this role a little bit better by either buffing these two talents or nerfing first blood um i don't see either cycle of hatred or essence break having too much use then moving on to the last row the only talent that's been changed here is demonic and they nerfed the metamorphosis you get after you i beam from eight seconds to six seconds so this means that early on in an expansion you will only be able to get one blade dance in your i beam meta so my Blade Dance is an 8.6 second cooldown um, uh, on a level 60 template character, which has pretty low haste. So I only have 0.4 seconds of cooldown reduction, but we'll need to go quite a bit before Blade Dance is a sub 6 second cooldown, so we can fit multiple of them in to our um, I-Beam Metamorphosis that we get. And then a few things that I forgot to mention are regarding target capping. So our Blade Dance has been target capped at 5, our Fell Barrage has been target capped at 5, and our I-Beam has been slightly reworked um, on how it deals damage. And it's not target capped per se, but they removed the scaling of it quite a lot, so you're not going to get such a huge burst of damage on lower number of targets. Next, let's take a look at the legendaries, and I will only cover the ones that at least seem good on paper, uh, even if in practice they don't quite work out yet, I will explain why. First up, we have Chaos Theory. Blade Dance has a 10% chance to grant you Chaotic Blades, increasing the damage of Chaos Strike by 25%, and its chance to refund Fury by an additional 60% for 8 seconds. So, in theory... This is a cool legendary, right? Every time you Blade Dance, um, the way you would play this is that every time you Blade Dance, you want to be at high Fury in case you get the buff, so then you can dump a bunch of Chaos Strikes out. However, in practice, 10% chance is quite low. Um, that, that number would have made sense at the end of BFA when we had a ton of haste from Furious Gaze, um, 
on top of that you were probably running one or two expedients and on top of that you had end game gear um so in that scenario where you're blade dancing quite often it makes sense to have a 10 percent proc rate in shadowlands where you're literally only blade dancing every 8.5 seconds it doesn't make too much sense 10 percent is much too low um and this might be a legendary that becomes playable at the end of the expansion but early on i don't see use too much next we have inner demon Chaos Strike has a chance to unleash your inner demon, causing it to crash into your target and deal chaos damage to all nearby targets. So this works the exact same way as the Unbound Chaos uh, talent. My only issue with this legendary is that the proc rate is quite low. So um, from what I read, it has about a 1.5 proc per minute, which is much 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 too low for any reliable damage uh, in mythic plus in arenas you're looking for reliable damage on super long boss fights that damage might equal out you know over the six seven minutes of the encounter but on short bursty encounters like in mythic plus where you're doing a pack another pack another pack you want consistency and not getting a proc for like two or three packs in a row is unacceptable Next, we have Dark Glare Medallion. IBM has a 20% chance to not incur its cooldown. Same thing as the other two legendaries suffer from. The chance of this happening is too low. 20%. Um, IBM has a 30 second cooldown, and we're no longer getting insane cooldown reduction from Demon Appetite or Demonic Appetite like we did at the end of BFA. So 20% chance every 30 seconds is much too low. It needs to be probably around 40 to 50%. Uh, to be either even considered um, over some of the other legendaries that we have. Then we have Sigil of the Illidari, casting I Beam summons an allied Vengeance Demon Hunter who casts Fell Devastation. This one is actually quite good. Uh, I think it's going to see a lot of play in Mythic Plus and in some of the raid encounters where you're dealing mostly cleave or AoE damage. This scales very well with the number of targets. Um, Currently, the Throw Glaive Legendary, which I will go over next, outperforms it in all scenarios. However, um, once tuning is done, I assume this will be the competitive option for Mythic Plus. And it's a pretty cool option. Basically, it makes your I-Beam um, window, whenever you I-Beam, it will deal extra damage from a nearby Demon Hunter. So it just makes your Burst window a little bit more powerful, which is always a good thing. And last but not least, we have Fell Bombardment. Immolation Aura has a chance to grant you a stack of Fell Bombardment, increasing the damage of your next throw glaive by 20% and then launching an additional glaive at a nearby enemy. This effect stacks up to 5 times. The only issue with it right now is that it will hit enemies that are out of combat, so you've probably seen some clips in Mythic Plus, especially where you throw glaive the little pack that you're fighting, and all of a sudden, three or four more mobs that were over there somewhere a hundred yards away all of a sudden are running towards you because your throw glaive bounced to them. So assuming that bug gets fixed this legendary is actually pretty cool and it has quite good interaction with some of our conduits I will go over that next but just to mention it um, so you have an idea what I'm talking about there is a conduit that makes targets hit by your throw glaive takes take extra damage from your I-beam. So if you're able to throw glaive the entire pack of mobs you're fighting, your I-beam will do more damage. Um, so that's quite a nice combination to have. On AoE packs, you will typically be able to get two throw glaives out at max stacks, um, or have like one max stack one and then have three or four stacks left over for your next immolation aura. On single target, however, you generate quite a few less stacks of fell bombardment meaning that you'll only be able to throw Glaive about every other Immolation Aura. Um, so on single target, it loses quite a lot of value, but it is still probably the best trait or the best legendary that we found so far on the Shadowlands beta. And next, let's take a look at Soulbind Conduits that we will have available. So there are currently three Havoc Demon Hunter specific ones and one for each Covenant. Um, some of them don't quite work as intended and some of them need to be polished up a little bit. First one here is Dancing with Fate. Blade Dance has a 5% chance to apply Essence Break. On paper this is cool because Essence Break increases the damage of your Chaos Strike and Blade Dance against targets. But 
in reality, if your blade dance applies an essence break, you're not going to be able to fit another blade dance into that essence break that you just applied until you get much higher haste. So at the beginning of the expansion, this is going to feel quite underwhelming, but then once you actually have enough haste to lower your blade dance cooldown sub 8 seconds, it might feel a little bit better on AoE. Then we have Serrated Glaive. Targets hit by Throw Glaive take 8% increased damage from I-Beam. And like I said, this has great, great synergy with the Throw Glaive Legendary because you're able to essentially Throw Glaive the entire pack that you're fighting and then your I-Beam will deal increased damage against all of them. So quite a good Legendary and it also has synergy with our toolkit. Um, so I like that a lot. This also incorporates you um, using Throw Glaive in your rotation. Because each time before you I-beam, in theory, you will want to throw Glaive so your I-beam will do more damage against the target that you're I-beaming. Then we have Growing Inferno. Immolation Aura's damage is increased by an additional 10% each time it ticks. So the white numbers on all of these will change with uh, ranks, with Conduit ranks. But Immolation Aura does quite a bit of damage currently, um, and increasing its damage is always a good thing. Then we do have a specific Conduit for each of the Covenants. For Venthyr, it's increased scrutiny, uh, reduces the cooldown of Sinful Brand by one second. So we'll see what this number actually ends up being. Sinful Brand is quite powerful, I'll talk about that in the Covenant section. But having CDR on it is quite nice. One second obviously will not do absolutely anything. But once this number actually goes up to 5 seconds, 10 seconds and so on, then it might be quite a good conduit to have. Then for... Kyrian, we have Repeat Decree. Elysian Decree echoes a sigil one second later for 50% damage. So I haven't tested how that works exactly, but assuming that you still get the fragments whenever the sigil goes off, it might still be pretty good, especially when paired with Demonic Appetite, because then you essentially get 180 Fury uh, every time you cast your Covenant ability. And then for Necrolord, we have Brooding Pool. Increase the duration of Father to the Flame by 5 seconds. So, it's pretty nice. Um, in reality, I don't think Necrolord will be used too much on Demon Hunters. Um, but again, that's something that I will cover in the Covenant section. Then, moving on to the Defensive and the Finesse Conduits. So the way things are shaping up currently is that in each of your soul binds you will have three potency conduits um, and one finesse or endurance conduit. In some rare cases you might drop down to two potency and have two finesse um, or endurance or any mix of both. The first one here is fell defender, the cooldown of blur is reduced by 5 seconds. That might be quite nice so it, that puts blur at a 55 second cooldown. Uh, then we have Vicious Ink, Demonic Wards reduces magic damage taken by additional 8%. So this might be really good in Arena, for example, against double casters or on certain raid encounters where you're taking primarily magic damage. Um, so these are the two that I would consider playing for. In so these are the two Endurance Conduits that I would consider playing. Then moving on to Finesse Conduits. Um, these, honestly, I don't like too much. So some of them might have some very niche uses the only one that maybe could be good is consume magic has 15 percent chance to dispel a second effect and even that only in pvp on raid or pve encounters typically there's only one debuff that needs to be dispelled um or getting extra movement speed after fell rush but other than that demon hunter doesn't really have that good endurance or finesse conduits in my opinion Next, let's take a look at the Covenant abilities because they will play a pretty important role in Shadowlands. For Kyrian, we have Elysian Decree. Place a Kyrian Sigil at the target location that activates after 2 seconds. Detonates to deal 120% of your attack power as arcane damage and shatter up to 3 lesser soul fragments from enemies affected by the Sigil. So, this is on a 1 minute cooldown by the way. Um, this... Covenant has a great interaction with Demonic Appetite. If that ends up being the meta talent, basically every time you press this ability, you gain 90 Fury because you're going to have uh, three lesser soul fragments. Then if you opt to run the Conduit, in theory, you will get a second explosion, so you actually get 180 Fury every minute. That is 
a pretty big um, increase in resource generation that Demon Hunter is currently lacking. So it might be a pretty good covenant to actually play, especially early on in the expansion when resource generation feels a little bit lackluster. Next for Necrolord, we have Father to the Flames. It's a two minute cooldown and has a super long tooltip. Commission a duel to the death against a condemned demon from the Theater of Pain. Vanquishing your foe releases its demon soul and creates a pool of demon blood that lasts 30 seconds. Fighting within the pool increases your attack speed by 20% and reduces the damage that enemies deal to you by 10%. Um, so sometimes an ad spawns, you kill it, it drops a pool of blood, you stand in it to deal extra damage um, or to attack faster rather. So that might have some interaction with demon blades where attacking faster will generate more um, fury. In reality, on most mythic encounters, there's a little bit too much movement, I think, to take advantage of a covenant ability like the Necrolord one, but we'll see if this actually ends up seeing any use at the high end. For the Night Fae, we have the Hunt. This is a 3 minute cooldown, 1 second cast, Charge an enemy, inflicting nature damage and rooting them in place for 3 seconds. The target is marked for 1 minute, increasing your fury generated against them with your demon bites by 50%. You may reactivate the hunt every 30 seconds to teleport behind the marked target, ignoring line of sight. So in reality, you'll be able to teleport to them twice uh, within that 1 minute period. This might be pretty nice for like tunneling down healers in arena. I don't see it being too useful in PvE. Um, however, if there's any very high mobility healers, um, this might be a good mechanic that allows you to keep up to them when they try to kite away. Then for Venthyr, we have Sinful Brand. It's a one minute cooldown. Brand an enemy with the mark of the Venthyr, reducing their melee and casting speeds by 30% and inflicting shadow damage over 8 seconds. Activating Metamorphosis applies Sinful Brand to all nearby enemies. So Sinful Brand is currently the best Covenant ability uh, just because of the sheer amount of throughput that it has. It does a ton of damage on single target. And on AoE, being able to sync your meta with like a big pull or you know a big burst window where you essentially get double Sinful Brand, one from actually pressing it, one from your meta, it increases our burst quite a bit. Um, it's a one minute cooldown. In dungeons, it feels a little bit weaker when you're outside of meta since meta is now a 4 minute cooldown and there's no way to actually lower that cooldown um, as far as I know. So every 4 minutes you get an AoE sinful brand, other than that every minute it's a single target sinful brand. For raiding this seems to be the best option, um, but for mythic plus we'll have to wait and see. I have a little suspicion that the Kyrian might outperform the Ventir Covenant for me. Next, let's talk a little bit about how Demon Hunter actually plays in Shadowlands because that is quite important. So Demon Hunter has been slowed down quite a bit because we lost all of the extra random powers that we got in BFA. We no longer have Corruption, we no longer have Furious Gaze, we no longer have random trinkets uh, that help us out. So the spec feels a lot slower to play and our burst windows every time we I-beam feel significantly weaker than they did in BFA. On the other hand, it still plays fairly smooth uh, depending on the playstyle. Um, I think Demon Hunter will have a little bit of an issue with resource generation early on in the tier, but then once you get some more gear, especially more haste gear, um, I think it should see a little bit of an improvement. I tried playing around with a few builds. For dungeons, there's quite a few builds that you can test out and play around with. Um, we also have multiple legendary options between the Throwglaive and the Fell Bombardment legendary. For raid encounters, some people have been testing the Momentum build. Um, I'm not a huge fan of Momentum, mostly because there's quite a few restrictions in Mythic raiding as to where you can dash, when you can move, uh, typically. So without actually cheesing this with some macros, um, it's a little bit finicky to play and I don't feel it uh, to be the smoothest of the playstyles. So I prefer going like a Fellblade Demonic build 
but we'll see what the meta build actually ends up being because that simply comes down to tuning what the meta build is. It has nothing to do with how well it actually plays. So overall, my impression of the Demon Hunter is that it's been nerfed quite a bit. Our utility um, is still mostly there. Our defensive capabilities have been nerfed pretty significantly, um, which is a shame. Our offensive kit is overall mostly unchanged. Um, my big concern is just that we are not allowed to fit two blade dances into our I-beam, and that feels a little bit weird since that was a very nice interaction that we had all of BFA. But other than that, I think some of the talents might need to be looked at as far as balancing goes, because for example, Trail of Ruin currently is just better than the other talents in this row, as well as First Blood is just hands down better than Cycle of Hatred or Essence Break in this row. So I really hope that they take a look at these talents and make it actually matter which ones you pick rather than just locking in First Blood for the rest of Shadowlands. Thank you so much for watching this video and if you enjoyed it please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Let me know in the comment section below what you think of the Havoc DH changes. Uh, do you like them, dislike them? I'm pretty sure I know which way most of you lean. Um, and also let me know if you played a Demon Hunter in BFA and you're considering changing away from it. Uh, why is that? And also what class are you considering changing to? Again, thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.